Bible study ataendelea na yale mafundisho aliyokuwa akifundisha jana ya kuwasilia wa Mungu and this morning i'm going to combine a few passages together na asubuhi hii anaenda kuchanganya mistari michache ya biblia pamoja to talk about a very special relationship of god with us kuzungumza na sisi kuhusu uhusiano wa kipekee wa Mungu na sisi his unity with us mmoja wake na wetu and some theologian call it a mystical union of god and us yani kile ambacho wasomi wa biblia wanasema kwamba muunganiko wa kiajabu kati ya Mungu na mwanadamu and ever we understand how he works in our heart na sasa tunaelewa jinsi anavyofanya katika mioyo zetu then we will be more more encouraged na hiyo itatutia moyo zaidi that his work among us is so real yani itaonekana kwamba kwetu sisi ni ya kweli okay let us um first read first corinthians 6:17 now you have to open the bible this time first corinthians 6:17 <coughs> asema kwamba sasa kila mmoja akafungue akafungue biblia yake kwenye kitabu cha Sikaha wa wa Korinto wa kwanza sura ya sita mstari wa 17 wa Korinto wa kwanza sura ya sita mstari wa 11 Here it says that but whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Ya kwamba yule ambaye ako pamoja na Kristo Yesu ako pamoja na Yesu katika roho. Now here it talks about whoever that Here it means Christians. Inapozungumza kwamba yoyote yule inamaanisha Mkristo because it says is united with the Lord. Kwa sababu inasema kwamba yeye ameunganika pamoja na Kristo. So when we believe in Jesus we are united with Jesus. Unapoamini katika Kristo wewe umeunganika pamoja na Kristo. And that is says he is one with him in spirit. Sema kwamba yeye ako katika umoja na yeye katika roho. Now you can look at my hands. I anasema uangalie mikono zake sijui na nini. If this represent the Lord, this hand. Kama mkono wake wa kulia unasimama kwa niaba ya Bwana. This hand represent us. Na huu mkono mwingine wa kushoto unasimama kwa niaba ya wanadamu. So when we believe in Jesus, so we united with Jesus Christ. Kwa sasa huyu Mkristo anapomwamini Yesu anaunganika pamoja na Kristo. But from the scripture we also know that the unity has degree. Na pia katika maandiko tunaona kwamba kule umoja kuna uzito wake. Now when we interpret scripture we can use other passages in the whole Bible. Tunapo tafsiri maandiko lazima pia tuzingatie mistari mingine ya Biblia. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 katika wa Korinto wa kwanza sura ya tatu. Jesus said the Corinthian Christians are like spiritual babies. Yaani basi Paulo anasema kwamba wa wale watu wa, wanaotoka katika mji wa Korintho wao ni kama watoto kiroho. That means there are spiritual babies and there are people who are more mature. Inamaanisha kwamba kuna wakristo ambao wani wachanga kiroho na kuna, kuna wale wengine ambao wamekwisha komaa kiroho. Don't turn to every passage just Stay on 1 Corinthians. You don't have to turn to every passage. I'm just using other passages to support that the degree that we are united with Jesus you know how much we we united with him has degree. Some people is more united, some people are less united. Sasa unaongea mambo mengi ya tafsiri. Usitoke katika ule mstari aliyosema wa kwanza. Ubakie papo hapo. Zile zingine anazozungumza anazisema ili kwamba zikalete zikapiane uzito kwa ule mstari aliyosoma wa kwanza katika Wakorinto wa kwanza 6:17. For instance in the book of Acts when they choose the seven deacons. Kwa mfano katika kitabu cha matendo ya mitume walipokuwa kiwachagua mashemanzi saba. The passage says that they look for people who are spirit filled. Maana kuna sema kwamba waangalie wale watu ambao wamejazwa roho mtakatifu. That means there are people who are not spirit filled. Inamaanisha kuna watu wengine ambao hawajajazwa na roho mtakatifu. So that means there's a degree of relationship. Inamaanisha kwamba haya mahusiano yanatofautiana. And we can see Moses he went up Mount Sinai. Tunaona Musa alienda katika mlima wa Sinai. 
He did not eat or drink for 40 days and nights. Ye hakula wala kunywa kwa usiku 40 na siku za mchana 40. So there was a very close relationship with God. Yaani hapo kulikuwa na uhusiano wa karibu sana na Mungu. And then when he came down his face was shining. Na alipoteremka kutoka kwenye ule mlima akakaja hapa chini uso wake ulikuwa unang'aa sana. The glory of God was showing through him. Utukufu wa Mungu ulikuwa unaonekana kupitia and when one of the as deacon was persecuted to death as Stephen, na yule Stefano alipokuwa kipigwa mawe, the, his face was like the face of an angel. Na pia uso wake ukabadilisho kwa kama uso wa malaika. And also 1 Samuel chapter uh, 10 and 19, you can write this down and then you can read it later. Mwandike chini Samueli wa kwanza sura ya kumi. Chapter 10 of chapter 19. Samueli wa kwanza sura ya kumi na pia sura ya kumi na tisa. There it says that there were a group of prophets. They were praising God. Sema kwamba tulikuwa na kikundi cha wanabi walokuwa kimsifu mungu. And Saul went there. Immediately he started to uh, prophesy. Na Sauli alipofika pale akaanza kutoa unabi. He was changed to a new person. So these people, these prophets have a close relationship with God. The anointing of God was heavy upon them. So we saw in this passage that there are Christians who have a stronger unity with God. Tunaona kwamba kuna wakristo wengine ambao wako na umoja wa nguvu na kwa katika Kristo Yesu. Now even though all are Christians, you know, for all the ones who really believe in Jesus, na hata kwa Kristo wa, wale wote ambao wanamwamini Yesu Kristo. But uh, this verse where it says united with the Lord, lakini mstari huu unaposema wanaunga walioungana na Bwana and one with him we know that there is a degree. Christians who love the Lord more and obey Him more are united with God, with Jesus more. So, we want to enter this stronger unity. Tunataka tuingie katika huu umoja wa nguvu. Now, the Bible also talk about he who sows to the flesh and he who sows to the spirit. Pia maandiko yanazungumza kuhusu yule aliyepanda kwa aliyepanda kwa mwili wake na yule aliyepanda kwa roho. Actually some Christians they might sow to the flesh. They believe in Jesus but they might sow to the flesh. And then they won't have such a high unity with God. In the heart they will have unbelief and sins and anger. Okay, now, what is the... So this passage was encourage us to have a strong immunity with him. Basi sasa huu mstari unatuimiza kwamba tuwe na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu. Now what is, the, what is God's nature in this verse? Basi uwasilia wa Mungu katika mstari huu ni gani? Think, please think. What is God's nature here in this verse? Katika huu mstari uwasilia wa Mungu ni upi? Hebu jaribu kufikiria zaidi. Okay, because of time, I'm going to tell you now, you write this down. God is a God of unity. God is a God of unity. He wants to have unity with us. He wants to be united with us. And whoever believes in Him, the unity, the unity starts right away. And the unity will become stronger and stronger. But for those who love God, the unity will be stronger. So one nature of God is He's a God of unity. 
Kwa hivyo uwasilia wa Mungu wa kwanza ni kwamba Mungu ni Mungu wa umoja. And now the grace now we have to distinguish nature is his nature how he is. Ni lazima pia utofautishe wale kwamba nature ni vile Mungu alivyo. And uwasilia ni vile Mungu alivyo. And grace is what he does to us. Blessings to us. So he is a God of unity. That's his nature. He he wants he wants to have unity with all Christians. And, and he wants to build a stronger unity. And Okay, his grace is his grace. Kwa hivyo neema yake ni hivi. He accepts all people and awakubali watu wote. Whenever they trust in Jesus as the savior, wanapomwamini Kristo kuwa mwokozi, he even though he sees the sins of every Christian. Kwa hivyo sasa yeye huwa tena haoni dhambi za wa Kristo. Because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ on the uh, on the cross that is given to us kwa sababu kwa sababu ya haki ya Kristo Yesu ambayo imetufunika sisi he is willing to have this unity with us kwa hivyo uh, yeye ako na ule moyo wa kuwa na umoja na sisi he want to come to us and have unity with us anataka aje ili awe na umoja na sisi he doesn't despise any person ya kwamba huyu Yesu hadharau mtu yoyote okay now we got to Move on to another passage. We combine all these verses together. In Matthew 16, verse 17, when Peter said that you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God, Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. So what this verse says is that that Peter could confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Because God can re reveal that to his heart. God can pass this message to him. Mungu anaweza kupitisha kupitisha ujumbe wake kupitia kwake. To let him know that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of Living God. Ya kwamba Mungu amemfunulia kajua kwamba Kristo ni mwana wa Mungu anayeishi. Now this combined to the other with the other verse. Sasa tunapoweka pamoja na ule mstari mwingine to tell us that God is not only united with us, he can pass messages to us. Basi na maanisha kwamba sio kwamba Mungu ameunganishwa tu na sisi lakini ana uwezo wa kupitisha ujumbe wake kwetu sisi. So he can reveal truth to us. Ya kwamba anaweza kutufunulia ukweli kwetu sisi. Now what is the nature of God here? Basi wasilia wa Mungu hapa ni upi? The nature of God is God is full of truth. Uwasilia ni kwamba Mungu amejawa na ukweli. Truth that will give people eternal life. Ukweli ambao utawapa watu uzima wa milele. And he is willing to have this truth pass on to people. Na mungu huyo anataka ukweli huu ufikie watu wote. And he can stay in the heart of people to bring this truth to people. Na huyo mungu anaweza kuhishi katika mioza wanadamu ili alete ukweli dani ya hizo mioza. So there can be a strong communication of God with us. Ya kwamba sasa kuna uwezekano kuwe na mawasiliano yaliyoboreshwa kati ya Mungu na sisi. That he can pass his messages to us. Ya kwamba Mungu anaweza kupitisha ujumbe wake kwetu sisi. So in our nature is he's a communicator. Kwa hivyo tena uwasilia mwingine ni kwamba huyu Mungu ni wa mawasiliano. He can communicate his thoughts. Anaweza kuwasilisha hoja zake. Okay, and then we go to another verse. Philippians 2:13. Tunaenda katika mstari mwingine wa Filipi 
sura ni ya pili mstari wa 13 wa Filipi sura ya pili mstari wa 13 for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose ni Mungu anayefanya kazi ndani yetu kwa kupalilia na kufanya matendo yake ili kusudi lake likatimie now please turn to the passage and look at it. Aya sasa funua Biblia yako enda katika hicho kitabu cha Wafilipi. Kumbuka tu katika Wafilipi sura ya 2 mstari wa 13. There is says that it's God who works in you. Na inasema kwamba Mungu ndiye anayefanya kazi ndani mwetu. So that we will have the will and the action ili kwamba tuwe na mapenzi na tuwe na matendo. Now the point is act who is acting because when Christians serve God it's we who serve God moves in a heart that we will serve but it is us who serve and God moves in our heart to pray. Na Mungu anatusukuma mioyoni mwetu ili tukaombe. It's us who pray. Ni sisi tunaoomba. So when it says here to will and to act. Na kusema kwamba ili tuwe tayari kutenda. That means is Christians inamaanisha kwamba wa Kristo who have the desire to make up the mind and to put it in action. Ambao wamepisha kujitoa muhanga kuweka hayo hiyo kazi katika matendo to fulfill God's purpose. Ili basi kutimiliza uh, malengo ya Mungu. That when we act, when we want to serve God. Ya kwamba tunapo mtumikia Mungu. Now this is very important. Please pay attention. Hili ya muhimu sasa hebu ukawe makini zaidi. When Christians wants to serve God, wa Kristo wanapotaka kumtumikia Mungu, when Christians want to love God, wa Kristo wanapotaka kumpenda Mungu, they think that is them who make up the mind to do it. Wao wanafikiria kwamba ni wao tu ambao wamejitengenezea akili zao ili wakamtumikie Mungu. But this verse tells us, kili mstari huu unatueleza, that is God who works in us. Ya kwamba ni Mungu anayetenda na so that we will make up the mind because make up the mind is us we make up the mind to do it and then to do the will of God because God works in our heart you, we have to let this sink in our mind very often we think of I am here, God is up there. Wakati mwingine huwa tunawaza kwamba sisi tuko hapa chini na Mungu ako pale tu. But this Bible verse tells us, lakini mstari huo Biblia inatueleza, when we make up our mind to serve God or to put in action, tunapo basi jitoa kwa ajili ya kufanyia Mungu kazi, it is God working in us. Ni Mungu mwenyewe anayefanya kazi ndani mwetu. So the work of God is mingled with our will and our action. Ya kwamba kazi ya Mungu inachanganyikana pamoja na hisia na na mapenzi yetu alafu tunaiweka katika matendo. Just like when Peter confessed that Jesus is Christ, the Christ and the Son of Living God, since vile Petero anapotangaza kwamba Masihi ni mwana wa Mungu aliye hai, he thought that he confessed himself but actually it's God who is was speaking to him moving him to have the desire to say and to say it out it, because of the work of God so what these verses together tell us God is so united with us that our thoughts, our action actually came from Him and us together. Amen. He changed us so much that when Christians obey Him, we change us so much that when we think we want to do something for God, actually it's God working in us. Now we notice that later when Jesus said He's going to 
Jerusalem to be crucified tunagundua tunaona kwamba wakati Yesu anasema kwamba anaenda katika Yerusalemu ili asulubishwe and Peter said no by no means you go na akasema hakuna chochote kitakuzuia utaenda and Jesus said Satan get behind me na Yesu akamwambia shetani hebu niondokee mbele rudi nyuma yangu so he says that Satan can also affect Christians kwa hivyo inamaanisha kwamba hata shetani anaweza kuadhiri maisha ya Kristo Sometimes Christians fight against each other. Wakati mwingine wa Kristo wanapigana wenyewe kwa wenyewe. They gossip ama wengine wanana wana wanafanya umbea. It came from the work of Satan in their lives. Mambo haya yanatoka katika maisha ya Mkristo ambaye ameongozwa na shetani. When a person love God more and have a close relationship with God. Mtu akimpenda Mungu zaidi na awe na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu. The unity will be stronger. Ule umoja utakuwa wa nguvu zaidi that God can make him make up his mind and make him put in action the will. So what he tells us is God is a God of unity. The unity is so high sometimes we don't No it is from God. Wakati mwingine huwa hatuelewi kwamba inatoka kwa Mungu. We thought it's from us. Sisi huwa tunafikiria kwamba imetoka ndani mwetu. It actually came from God. Lakini ilitoka kwa Mungu. But when our will is so changed by God, lakini mapenzi yetu yanapobadilishwa na Mungu, at the same time we want to do it. Na wakati huo tunataka kufanya, at the same time is God who wants to do it. Na ni Mungu anayetaka sisi tuyafanye. So this tells us that there is a very high yield this can give us a great comfort and encouragement we are not here alone God's unity with us is so high sometimes we don't even notice that it's from God wakati mwingine hata hatuelewi kwamba imetoka kwa Mungu And the more the close the closer the relationship na vile unavyoendelea kuweka uhusiano wako karibu na Mungu the more when this person speaks he's speaking from the holy spirit ndio vile utakavyokuwa ukinena unanena kutoka kwa roho mtakatifu but at the same time there are many people who have sinful thoughts mingled with in him wakati mwingine basi kuna wale ambao mawazo yao ya dhambi yameunganika pamoja ndani mwao so i hope this will give us motivation kwa hivyo ninatumainia kwamba hii itatuchochea zaidi i want all God's will in my heart. Nataka Mungu akafanye kazi ndani ya moyo wako. So in the Lord's prayer, wakati tunapoomba ile sala ya Bwana, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mapenzi yako yakatimizwe hapa duniani jinsi yalivyo mbinguni. The will of God in heaven, ya kwamba mapenzi ya Mungu mbinguni perfectly rule the heaven. Yaani inaongoza mbingu yote. Amen. But on earth here, lakini hapa duniani, many Christians disobey his will. Wa wa Kristo wengi hawatii mapenzi ya Mungu. But the more we follow his will, lakini tunapoendelea kufuata mapenzi ya Mungu. And when we didn't realize it, na kwa hatuko tunayaelewa, our thoughts, our decision and our action all came from God. Matendo yetu na hata maamuzi yetu yametoka yote kwa Mungu. And there is a Big, big difference. Sasa hapa kuna utofauti mkubwa zaidi. Because the voice of Satan will come to to steal, to kill and to destroy. Kwa sababu kazi ya shetani amekuja kuharibu ku amekuja kuua, kuharibu na kuiba. It will hurt us. Yaani hiyo inatufinyilia chini. It will bring destruction. Italeta uharibifu. But the will of God is the perfect will. Lakini mapenzi ya Mungu ambayo ni mapenzi yaliyo sawa sawa kabisa. Which is higher than heaven is above the earth. Ambayo iko juu zaidi na zaidi. So his way and his thoughts are above our hearts. Hata njia zake na mawazo yake yanashinda mawazo ya mwanadamu zaidi. So when Christian are close to God, wakati wa Kristo wanapomsongea Mungu, his thoughts will be very close to God's thoughts. Mawazo yao yanakuwa karibu na mawazo ya Mungu. But we should be very humble. Lakini lazima tuwe wa kuyenyekea. We should be humble to discern our will is it from God or not. Ni lazima unyekee ujue kwamba je, mapenzi yako ni ya Mungu ama ni yako ya kujiumbia. Some people are very proud. Wakati watu wengine wako na kiburi sana. Especially some so called prophets. 
Asua sana wale wanaojiita manabii. They think every thought they have is from God. Huwa wanafikiria kwamba mawazo yote unayoyawaza yametoka kwa Mungu. They can be a danger. Yaweza kuwa hatari. Any time you should be humble in front of God. Kila wakati lazima ukanyekee mbele za Mungu. And always have the word of God fill our hearts. Na kila wakati uwe na neno la Mungu limejaza roho yako. So that we can discern the thoughts whether it's from God or not. Ili kwamba ukaweze kupambanua kwamba mawazo haya ni ya Mungu ama ni ya mwanadamu. And if the closer the person is with God then the more thoughts he has from God. Huyo mtu jinsi alivyo na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu ndivyo mawazo yake alivyo ya karibu na mawazo ya Mungu. I use an illustration. Ninatumia mfano. Now there are leaders who would say things to hurt people. Kuna viongozi ambao wanapenda kuongea maneno ambayo inawajerui ama inawaumiza wengine. control people. Ama kazi yao wao ni kupeana mwelekeo na kumwambia watu cha kufanya. They will say you have to follow me, you have to obey everything I say. Wanasema lazima unifuate, lazima utii yale mnayozungumza. And they might attack people who disobey them. Na hao hata wanaweza pia ku kuongea maneno ya uchungu sana kwa wale watu ambao hawajawatii instead of motivating them motivating them with the grace of god badala ya kuwachochea katika upendo wa Mungu the use of law to control and accuse people kazi yao ni kwa hukumu na kuambia maneno makubwa makubwa they think they are doing the will of god wanafikiria kwamba wanafanya mapenzi ya Mungu but they have this satanic thought to control the people lakini wako na haya mawazo ya shetani ya kuwapokea watu now we, we should understand this lazima tuelewe haya god moves and motivates people to serve him Mungu ndiye anayechochea watu ili wakamtumikie. God doesn't control people. Sio kwamba Mungu kazi yake ni kuwapigia watu kelele. This why when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, na ndivyo unapojazwa na Roho Mtakatifu, we have the motivation to serve God. Ni lazima tuwe na mchochea wa kumtumikia Mungu. But the person is not out of control. Lakini huyo mtu usimtoe nje ya mawazo ya Mungu. He can stop the manifestation any time. Huyo mtu anaweza kusimamisha hata ufumbuzi wa Mungu wakati wa But when the evil spirit comes on the person, wakati roho mchafu unapokuja kwa huyo mtu, the person is out of control. Huyo mtu anaweza kushindwa kudhibitika. Say that controls people. Shetani pia huwa anawao peana mielekeo kwa watu. And if you look at godly families and ungodly families. Unapoangalia familia zinazomtii Mungu na zile ambazo familia hazijamtii Mungu. And godly families try to control, you know, that they try to control the spouse. Familia ambazo hazijamtii Mungu utapata kwamba kama ni wanandoa wote wanapigiana kelele. They want to use the spouse. Wanapigiana kelele katika maisha yao. But godly families Couples, they will love each other to motivate each other to to build up a family. Lakini wale wanandoa ambao wanaishi katika maisha ya Ukristo, wao huwa wanaongeleana wakiongea wanaongea maneno ya upole, maneno mazuri ya utaratibu. So some people they look like they are serving God, watu wengine wanaonekana kana kwamba wanamtumikia Mungu, but they use controlling way from Satan. Lakini wanatumia mbinu za kishetani. Now Christians should obey the leaders. Ndio hivyo wa Kristo lazima mkatii wale viongozi wenu. But the Bible said do not control control the the, uh, the sheep of God. Lakini maandiko yanasema kwamba usije ukazuhia wale kondoo wa Bwana. I'm saying it's easy for sinful thoughts to come in. Nasema ni rahisi sana mawazo ya kishetani kuingilia mtu. But the more close when we are closer to God, lakini unaposonga karibu na Mungu, the voice of God will come so naturally. Sauti ya Mungu itakuwa ya kweli kwako that Christians can receive messages from God. Ya kwamba wa Kristo anaweza kwanza kupokea eh ujumbe kutoka kwa Mungu. So I encourage you to have this good relationship with God. Ninawahimiza kwamba tukawe na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu. Amen. Always love the Lord. Kila siku ukampende Mungu. And let the Lord move in our heart freely. Na uache Mungu akafanye kazi katika mioyo zetu pasipokupingwa. In your prayers too. Katika maombi yako pia I encourage you not just to ask for me different things. Ninakuimiza kwamba usiwe tu mtu wa kuomba na kuomba. Wakati unapoingia katika sala ni kuomba ukiomba omba vitu. But 
have more time building the relationship with God. Lakini uwe na kipindi kirefu cha kujenga uhusiano wako na Mungu. We appreciate God and love him. Unapo sema kwamba Mungu nakupenda. And when God can move his spirit freely in us, na Mungu anaweza kutuma roho wake akaje ndani yetu, our mind will be more peaceful. Yaani mawazo yako yatakuwa yametulia. For the love of God. Kwa sababu ya upendo. And we want to bless people. Na tunataka kuwabariki watu. There will change in the prayer. Hapo sasa unabadilishwa katika maombi. The most important thing in a prayer, la muhimu katika maombi, is we are changed by God. Ni kwamba tubadilishwe na Mungu. They will live the way Jesus lives. Ya kwamba tuishi jinsi vile Kristo alivyoishi. And God can move in us freely. Na Mungu anaweza kufanya kazi ndani mwetu pasipo kupingwa. And then we can hear more messages from God. Na tunaweza kupokea jumbe nyingi kutoka kwa Mungu. And then what we say what we do will be from God. Kile tunachosema tunachotenda kitakuwa kimetoka kwa Mungu. Now so I'm combining these verses. Anaweka pamoja mistari hizi. And in the verse, in the verse, Philippians one six. Wa Filipi sura ya kwanza mstari wa tisa. Wa Filipi sura ya kwanza mstari wa sita. Being confident of this. Mstari wa sita. Wa Filipi sura ya kwanza mstari wa sita. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work will carry it to the completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Ya kwamba sisi tumekuwa tumeimizika na tuko imara ya kwamba yule aliyeanzisha kazi ndani mwetu ataifanya hadi atakapofikitimisha hiyo kazi. Now this verse says that God who began a good work in us. That means is God who gave us salvation. Mstari huu unamaanisha kwamba Mungu aliyeanzisha wokovu ndani mwetu. God gave us eternal life atatupa uzima wa milele. A new nature in us na atatuumbia uwasilia mpya ndani mwetu. And begin a good work in our life. Na aanze kazi nzuri ndani ya maisha yetu. He will carry it to completion. Yeye ataifikisha hadi hitimisho. Until the day of Christ Jesus. Mpaka ile siku ya Bwana Yesu Kristo. That means God is working in our life all the time. Inamaanisha kwamba Mungu anafanya kazi maishani mwetu kila wakati. It was him who brought us to salvation. Ni yeye aliyetuleta katika wokovu. Now even before we were saved, God Use different people to work in our lives. Hata wakati tulikuwa hatujaokoka, Mungu alitumia watu tofauti kuleta ujumbe huu katika maisha yetu. To bring us to believe to faith in Jesus Christ. Ili kwamba tukaweke imani yetu kwa Kristo Yesu. And as since we are saved, na kwa sababu tumeokolewa, he doesn't leave us hatuachili. He continue moving our heart anaendelea kufanya kazi ndani ya mioyo yetu. To motivate us to follow him. Anatuchochea ili tumfuate. And he keep working in our heart na anaendelea kufanya kazi katika mioyo yetu. So that we become better and better. Ili kwamba tunakuwa wazuri na wazuri zaidi. That we follow his will. Tutafuata mapenzi yake kwa ukaribu. Now this is similar to what we said earlier. Na hii inafanana na kile ambacho tumekisema hapo mapema doing things in our lives. Yaani tunaanza kufanya vitu katika maisha yetu. It's like in John chapter 15, ni kwa mfano wa kile kitabu cha Yohana sura ya 15. He's pruning the branches. Ya kwamba Mungu anayechonga yale matawi. And he's causing the branches to have fruit. Na anasababisha yale matawi yakazae matunda. Because he, the more he cleans out the clean out the dirty parts. Kwa sababu wakati anapoendelea kutoa zile sehemu chafu, the more he can work through us, hivyo ndivyo anavyoendelea kufanya kazi ndani mwetu to bear good fruit ili tukazalishe matunda mazuri. So this combined to the other with the other verses, basi tunapounganisha mistari hizi na zile zingine, we can see that he's working hard. Tunaona kwamba Mungu anafanya kazi karibu sana na sisi. The nature of God here is au Uwasilia wa Mungu hapa ni He is a God of action. Ni Mungu wa matendo. Wherever he is, you can write this down. He is a God of action. Atiwanike chini kwamba uwasilia wa Mungu ni Mungu wa matendo. Wherever he is, popote penye yupo, he will work. Atafanya kazi. When people allow him to work. Watu wanapomkubalia afanye kazi. When people have a close relationship with him. Na mtu akiwa na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu. He will continue to work. Yeye ataendelea kutenda. He will change this person. Atabadilisha mtu huyu. He will clean out the dirty parts. Atasafisha ile sehemu chafu. He will motivate him to change. Atamsababisha pia abadilike. He will give him 
strength atampa nguvu give the gifts of the holy spirit akampe vipawa vya roho mtakatifu and open the way for him to serve god amfungulie njia zake za yeye kumtumikia mungu so we realize that it's all planned for us tunagundua kwamba vipango hivi za mungu kwetu sisi and he keep working in us mungu analia kufanya kazi na nimwetu so that we will follow his will ili kwamba tukafuate mapenzi yake and he will bring it to completion na ataifikisha mwisho if we follow him kama tutamfuga and obey na kumti and let God speak to us na tuwasilie Mungu anenasi and obey him whenever he speak to us na wakati Mungu anaponena na wewe hebu ukatii sauti ya Mungu now this few verses if you put it together mistari hii michache unapoiweka pamoja will have a deeper understanding of God God's relationship with us. Kuelewa kwako kuhusu mahusiano yako na Mungu yatakuwa ya vilindini zaidi. Then we know that we're not alone. Ya kwamba utaelewa wewe haupo peke yako. God is so close to us. Mungu ako karibu na sisi. Sometimes we don't even tell whether it's our fault or God's fault. Wakati mwingine hata tunashindwa kuelewa kama ni mawazo yetu ama ni mawazo ya Mungu. For Christians who love God very often the thoughts came from God. Kwa wale wa Kristo wanaompenda Mungu kila wakati mawazo yao kutoka kwa Mungu. But at the same time I want to say there are people and even leaders they didn't realize they have thoughts from Satan because they want money. Na pia ni lazima ujue kwamba kuna watu wengine ambao wanajifanya ni wakristo wanapoona watu kazi yao ni kuomba homba hela tu wanafikiria kwamba mawazo hayo yametoka kwa Mungu. They want to control the people. Yaani wanataka wao wapibiti watu. They want reputation. Wanataka wajulikane kwamba ni wakubwa zaidi. And some of them even use witchcraft. Na hata wengine wanatumia uchawi. So when people are doing that, watu wanapofanya hivyo, they will be more and more affected by Satan. Wao inamaanisha kwamba wanatumikiwa na shetani zaidi. If a so-called pastor really use witchcraft, kwa kweli kama mtu anayeitwa mchungaji, anaweza kutumia uchawi. I would say he's already controlled by Satan. Anasema kwamba huyo mtu anatumikiwa na shetani kabisa. He's not a servant of God. Huyo sio mtumishi wa Mungu. He's a servant of Satan. Yeye ni mtumishi wa shetani. So don't ever admire those people who brought so many people to follow him. Kwa hivyo wewe usije ukawapenda wale watu ambao kazi yao ni kutaka makusanyiko mengi ya watu ya wafuate because God doesn't use witchcraft. Kwa sababu Mungu yeye hatumii uchawi. And also when we serve God, na pia unapomtumikia Mungu, we want to have a, as pure a heart as possible. Ni lazima uwe na moyo safi kadri ya uwezo wako. Okay? Now I'm going to summarize these few verses together. Anataka sasa ku weka katika ufupi mistari hii yote pamoja. Now you don't have to turn to the Bible now because I'm going to talk about these few verses I I just talked about. Yes, sasa usifunue Biblia yako kwa sababu umekwisha kusoma yale nilitaka usome kwa hivyo nataka kuyamalizisha kumaliz, yale. Okay, maybe another verse um Ephesians 3:17 will be how Kuna mstari mwingine ambao alikuwa amesahau after this verse. Uongeze katika zile mstari ulizoziandika kwenye kitabu cha Ephesians 3:17. Wa Efeso 3:17, wa Efeso 3, wa Efeso sura ya 3 mstari wa 17. Okay. There it says that so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and I pray that you be rooted and established in love. Ya kwamba ninawaombeni kwamba Kristo akaishi ndani mwenu kwa kupitia kwa njia ya imani na ninaomba kwamba huyu ninaomba kwamba nyinyi mliopandwa katika Kristo Yesu mkaweke mkakite mizizi yenu katika upendo So here also talk about Christ may dwell in your hearts Inasema kwamba Kristo akaishi ndani ya mioyo yenu through faith kupitia kwa njia ya imani that he lives in your heart ya kwamba anaishi katika mioyo yetu and then you are strongly rooted and established in the love of God na sasa umepangwa umekita mizizi katika upendo wa Mungu so God is rooted in our life kwa hivyo Mungu ameweka mizizi yake katika maisha yetu that is love his love is controlling us guiding us ya kwamba upendo wake ndio unaotupa mwelekeo that we have this close relationship with him. Ya kwamba tuko na uhusiano wa karibu na yeye. So he is a God that wants to have firm foundation with us. Kwa hivyo ni Mungu ambaye anataka kuwa na msingi ulio imara pamoja nasi. He wants to have a very firm relationship. Anataka kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu sana na sisi ambao uko na nguvu. That he 
You know, it's not just a loose relationship. It's a firm relationship. That we firmly believe that God is good. His love is good. He totally is God who is controlling and us. Another passage related to this is Galatians 2.20. Na mstari mwingine ambao unaweza kufananisha nao ni wa Galatia sura ya 2 mstari wa 20. I have been crucified with Jesus Christ. Nimesulubiwa na Kristo Yesu. That is not me who lives but Christ who lives in me. Sio mimi naishi lakini Kristo anaishi ndani mwangu wa Galatia sura ya 2 mstari wa 20. Galatians 2:20. Wa Galatia sura ya 2 mstari wa 20. Okay, now we look at these verses together. Aya sasa mstari hizi anaziweka pamoja. So first Corinthians 6:17 wa Korinto wa kwanza sura ya 6 mstari wa 17 first verse I gave you huo ndo mstari leo anza nao kwa hivyo wale ndio anza na sisi hauna usiandike maana kumbukisha kuandika when we believe in Jesus we are united with him ukiamini ndani ya Kristo Yesu umekwisha unganika pamoja naye and we are one with God in spirit na sisi tuko katika umoja na Mungu wetu kiroho but this unity has degree lakini umoja huu una viwango Christians who have a close relationship with God has a strong unity. Wale wa Kristo ambao wako na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu, wao uhusiano umoja wao ni wa nguvu zaidi. We Christians are just lightly united with Christ. Ya kwamba sisi wa Kristo wengine tumeunganishwa tu na Mungu pasipo kuunganishwa kwa nguvu. The nature of God is he is a God of unity. Sasa uwasilia wa Mungu hapa ni kwamba Mungu ni Mungu wa umoja. He to be united with us. Anataka kuunganika pamoja na Sadi can work in us ili akafanye kazi ndani mwetu and to bless us ili atubariki. And then Matthew 16:17 Mathayo 16 mstari wa 17 tumekwisha kuandika kitabu. That Peter could confess that Jesus is the Christ the Son of the living God. Ya kwamba Petero anaweza kusema kwamba Yesu ni mwana wa Mungu aliye hai because the Father in heaven revealed that to him. Kwa sababu Baba wa mbinguni ndiye aliyemfunulia Petero mambo hayo. So when God lived, lives in us, kwa hivyo Mungu anapoishi ndani mwetu He doesn't just sleep there. Sio kwamba analala tu hapo. He will give us the truth. Atatupa ukweli. He will speak to us. Atanena na sisi. So he is a God who speaks. Kwa hivyo ni Mungu anayezungumza. And he speaks truth. Na anazungumza ukweli. And wherever he is, he will bring good things. Na yule yote atakayesikia atavuna mambo mema. And then if he a Philippians 2:13, wa Filipi sura ya 2 mstari wa 13 nikisha uona mambo. It is God who works in us to will and to act. Ni Mungu anayefanya kazi ndani yetu kwa mapenzi na kutenda in order to fulfill God's good purpose. Ili kwamba maksudi ya Mungu yakatimia. So he works in us, kwa hivyo anafanya kazi ndani mwetu so that Christians who follow God, ili kwamba wakristo wanaomfuata Mungu, will naturally have the desire to serve God. Uwasilia wao utakuwa itakuwa ni mapenzi ya matamanio ya kumtumikia Mungu. And he'll put it in action. Na atayaweka katika matendo. Sometimes we think it's our own action. Wakati mwingine tunafikiria tukisema kwamba ni mapenzi yetu sisi. But it's God who works in us. Lakini ni Mungu anayefanya kazi ndani mwetu. His Thoughts and his actions are so combined with us. Mawazo yake na matendo yake yameunganika pamoja na ya kwetu. That we have a high unity with him. Ili kwamba tuko na umoja wa hali ya juu pamoja naye. And the closer we are with him, na vile tunavyoendelea kuwa karibu naye, the more God will act through us. Na hivyo ndivyo Mungu anavyoendelea kufanya kazi ndani mwetu. So he is a God of action. Kwa hivyo ni Mungu wa matendo. And he is a God of influence. Na ni Mungu anayeshawishi. He influences whoever is close to him. Anamshawishi yule anayemsogelea. His influence actually become part of us. Sasa kule kushawishi kwa Mungu kunakuwa sehemu moja na wewe that we have this continual influence from God. Ya kwamba wewe unaendelea kushawishika kutoka kwa Mungu. That we are not living alone. Ya kwamba sasa hauishi peke yako. It's like two persons now is guiding our lives. Ni kama watu wawili sasa wanatupa mwelekeo katika maisha yetu. God is the the, the leader. 
Mungu ndiyo kiongozi. And then when we are moved by God, na kama kwa kweli tumebebwa na Mungu. We always want to follow God's will. Tungelipenda kufuata mapenzi ya Mungu. So God up here and we here. Mungu apo hapa juu na sisi tuko hapa hivi. And then when he moves in us, we follow him. Na anapotubeba sisi tunamfuata tu. So we work together. Tunafanya kazi pamoja. And then the person sometimes cannot tell us from God. Na wakati mwingine hata huwezi jua kwamba yametoka kwa Mungu. But when we discern the thoughts and the action, we know it's from God. Lakini unapojaribu kuangalia na kuchunguza utaelewa kwamba mambo hayo yote yametoka kwa Mungu. I can't give me these teachings. Kwa mfano Mungu alimpa haka jamaa haya mafundisho. To discover his nature and his grace for ili kwamba akapate kugundua uasilia wa Mungu katika mistari i i see that it's from god yani kama jamaa kanaona haya mambo yametoka kwa Mungu and i thank god so much for that na kana shukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya hayo mambo okay and there ya Yesu makofi jamaa and that philippians 16 wa filipi sura ya kwanza mstari wa 6 that God who has begun he began a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Ya kwamba Mungu alianzisha kazi na nimu yetu ataifikisha mwisho hadi siku ya Kristo Yesu. So God is a God of work. Kwa hivyo Mungu ni Mungu anayefanya kazi. And he is a God of good work. Na ni Mungu wa kazi nzuri. Every work of his is good. Kwa hivyo kila kazi ya Mungu ni nzuri. He keep working in our lives. Anaendelea kufanya kazi katika maisha yetu. He finished what he has begun. Na atamaliza yale aliyoyaanzisha. So he is a God who can complete his job. Kwa hivyo ni Mungu ambaye ana uwezo wa kumaliza kazi aliyoianzisha. He doesn't stop in the middle. Yeye haanzi kazi na kuachilia njia. He can complete it to the end. Lazima kisha mwisho and bring good results na ilete mazao mazuri and efficient 317 when this is sura ya 3 mstari wa 17 that Christ would dwell in your hearts ya kwamba Mungu anaishi ndani ya mioyo yetu that you be rooted and established in love ya kwamba wewe sasa umewekwa na umetambulika kwa sababu ya upendo so when God is in us Mungu akiwa ndani yetu his love will take root in our hearts upendo wake utajaa ndani ya mioyo yetu firm foundation na utajengwa katika msingi ulio imara so God is a God with firm foundation. Kwa hivyo Mungu ni Mungu wa msingi ulio imara. He will take root in our lives. Yeye atachukua atatamizizi katika maisha yetu. And change our life. Na abadilishe maisha yetu. Now with all this teaching put together, mafundisho haya yote tunapoyaweka pamoja, every day when we follow God, kila siku unapomfuata Mungu, when we pray to God, tunapomwomba Mungu, we say it's God who moves in me so that I will pray. Unasema ni Mungu anayenisukuma ili niombe. And God is working through my prayer. Na Mungu anafanya kazi kupitia maombi yangu. To change my life. Kubadilisha maisha yangu. So God has not forsaken me. Kwa hivyo Mungu hajanisahau. He is very united with me. Mungu wako pamoja na mimi. And then when I want to bless people. Na ninapotaka kubariki watu. This God who is working here. Ni Mungu anayefanya kazi hapa. So it's not me doing my work. Sio mimi kufanya kazi peke yangu. Ministry is not our ministry. Uduma tulio nao sio wetu sisi binafsi. God's ministry. Ni uduma wa Mungu. It's God who moves me to do the ministry. Ni Mungu anayenisukuma nifanye huo huduma. And when he started it, na alipoanzisha, he will finish it. Ataumaliza. So when I have a close relationship, kwa hivyo napokuwa na uhusiano karibu na Mungu, and follow his way, na kufuata njia zake, and glorify him all the time, na kutukuza Mungu kila wakati, and have strength from the Lord, and kuwa na nguvu kutoka kwa Bwana. And rejoice in the Lord, nilifurahia katika Bwana. He will bring everything to completion. Yeye atafikisha mambo haya yote mwisho. He will do great and great things atafanya mambo makubwa na makubwa because it's him who works it out sababu ni yeye anayefanya kazi so i can relax kwa hivyo unaweza dunda mwenyezi now relax doesn't mean we don't work aha kuburudika ndani ya Yesu haimaanishi kwamba haufanyi kazi we do work unafanya kazi we do study the scripture unasoma maandiko you know this i combine these verses together yani umegundua kwamba haka jamaa kameweka hizi mistari zote pamoja to arrive at, at a teaching ili akakafikie fundisho fulani that god is so united with us ya kwamba mungu ameunganika pamoja nasi that he works in us ya kwamba anafanya kazi na nimweke make his plan come true in our life anafanya mipango yake inaonekana wazi maisha yetu and he will bring it to completion na ataifikisha mwisho so we don't have to worry about anything Tusijalishi, tusijali kuhusu mambo mengine. If we clear our heart of any sin, kama basi tusafisha dhambi zetu, 
Whenever we have worry or doubts or anger, wakati unapo kasirishwa, umebabaika, hauna furaha, have any selfish thoughts, labda ukana wale mawazo ya kuwa mtoyo, we ask God to forgive us, unaomba mungu wa kusamini, and cleanse us from all the sins, na usafishi kutoka ya kadhamizi zote, because these sins will destroy God's plan, kwa sababu dhami hili zote, zitaharibu mpangu wa mungu nani ya maisha yetu, and then we won't be moved by God so much, na sasa wewe pia hauta pata na fazi ya kutumikia mungu za hili, You think of this. Ebu waza hivi. Now this represent you. This mic represent you. Hiyo microphone ameshika ina simama kwa niaba yako. This is God. Na huyu ni Mungu. And this is your sinful nature and Satan. Na huyu sehemu nyingine ni uwasilia wako wa dhambi na shetani. Okay, this is God. Huyu Mungu. This is a sin our sinful nature and Satan. Uwasilia wetu wa kidhambi na shetani. When we have a close relationship with God, tunapokuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu God guides us Mungu anatuongoza But if a person has a lot of worry and anger na huyu mtu kama wako na dhambi nyingi zaidi and selfishness anakuwa mtu mwenye dhambi then he is guided by the devil sasa yeye anaongozwa na shetani and his life will go to destruction na maisha yake yataharibiwa so we realize how important it is for us to be cleansed from sin hebu sasa ukagundue jinsi lipo la muhimu sana wewe kukaa mbali na dhambi and follow God totally na kumfuata Mungu kwa ukamilifu and then we can relax and rejoice every day unaweza kufurahia katika bwana kila siku God is guiding me Mungu ananiongoza God is blessing me Mungu ananibariki God is, God is giving me strength. Mungu ananipa nguvu. I don't have to worry about anything. Sitaki sasa nikababaishe na Lord. I I know I'm following God's plan. Na najua nafuata mpango wa Mungu. And I'll go higher and higher. Nataenda juu na juu zaidi. So this teaches this prayer Bible verses combined together. Ili fundisho la kuweka mistari ya Biblia pamoja. Can give us a more complete picture of our relationship with God. Inaweza kutupa taswira kubwa kumhusu Bwana wetu Kristo. We here and God up there. Sio sisi hapa lakini Mungu aliye pale juu. Is God moving so much in us? Ni Mungu anayefanya kazi na nimu yetu. That God can become part of us. Ya kwamba Mungu anaweza fanyika sehemu moja na sisi. So in the heart is God is Christ living in me, not me anymore. Basi katika moyo wako ni Kristo ndiye anayeishi sio wewe unayeishi. Okay? Any question? Swali lolote. Swali lolote kuhusu kile ninachofundisha. Do you find that the scripture support this? Je, umeweza kupata mistari ambayo inasaidia ile ile fundisha ambayo amenifundisha? Amen. Is this important? Je, ni muhimu? So I hope you remember this and study through this kind of Bible passages. Natumai utaamini mambo haya na uiweke katika matendo. When I study a certain passage, anapo yeye jifundisha kuhusu mstari fulani wa Biblia. I'll look at each key verse. Huwa anaangalia maneno ambayo ni maneno yaliyo na uzito zaidi. I will meditate on each key word. Wewe yeye atafanya utafakari kwa yale maneno. What is the meaning of that? Maneno haya yanamaanisha nini? And How can I discover God's nature? Na basi nitagundua vipi uwasilia wa Mungu? And how I can follow God? Na jinsi anavyoweza kumfuata? I want to say that also God's nature by the study. Anataka kusema kwamba pia ule uwasilia kujifundisha mm, yale yale masomo ya kujifundisha uwasilia wa Mungu katika Biblia also has the law and holiness of God. Pia iko na sheria na utakatifu wa Mungu. Now in these few verses if I now I just apply the grace now if I apply the law and the holiness of God what would it be Na sasa hii mstari kila alipokuwa akizungumzia alikuwa anatumia neema itaonekana mna gani akitumia sheria For instance 1 Corinthians 6:17 Kwa mfano wa Korinto wa kwanza sura ya 6 mstari wa 17 Whoever the first verse I gave you. Ni ule mstari ambao tumepeana. Whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Yule ambaye ameunganika pamoja na Bwana, wameunganika pamoja kiroho. So, how do you find a law in this passage? Ninapata vipi sheria katika mstari huu? You look at the opposite. Hebu angalia kinyume chake. So someone is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Ya kwamba yule aliyeunganika pamoja na Bwana ako pamoja naye kiroho. So what is the opposite? 
Utofauti wa huo mstari ni nini? The opposite is he is not united. Kinyume cha huyo huo mstari kwamba kuna yule ambaye hajaunganika pamoja naye. Or just partly united. Ama mwenye ameunganika naye lakini sio kwa viwango vya juu. Or he is united with sin. Ama yeye badala ya kuunganika na Mungu ameunganika na dhambi. What will happen if a person is united with sin or witchcraft or Satan? Ni nini kitakachofanyika kama mtu yeye amependa dhambi, amependa uchawi na mambo mengine? Any sinful thought can bring a lot of destruction. Yaani wazo lolote baya la dhambi litaleta uharibifu mkubwa sana. I use an illustration. Anatumia mfano. A Christian, you know, two Christians are married. Kuna wakristo wawili ambao wameoana. But then the man starts to have interest in another woman. Lakini mwanaume sasa anaanza kuvutiwa na mke mwingine wa kanisa. His thoughts start to unite with this other woman. Mawazo yake yanaanza kuunganika na mawazo ya yule mke mwingine. And then in the process he is more attracted by this woman. Na sasa anavutiwa zaidi na huyo mwanamke. And he could be so attracted that one day he gave up his wife. Na anaweza Eh, anaweza kuvutiwa na huyo mwanamke mpaka siku moja atakuja kuachana na mkewe then he is united with adultery sasa yeye anaunganika na mtu ambaye ni mzinzi or he could be united with love of money ama labda uhusiano wao kile kinacholeta ni kwa sababu ya pesa in the ministry he just want more money yani kwa mfano katika huduma yeye anataka huyo mtu awe na hela nyingi his heart is always love for money na moyo wake ni moyo wa kupenda pesa tu and what happened is he's more affected by adultery or the love of money kwa hivyo ama huyo mtu anaweza adhiriwa na haya mambo ya labda ya kupenda pesa ama ya kutaka wanawake wengine for some Christians who be worry and doubts and anger wakati mwingine wa kusongiri itakuwa ni kama kubabaishwa na mambo ama kukasirishwa and then what happened is he will bear the fruit of anger the adultery and sins ya kwamba kile kitakachofanyika matunda yake ambayo atayazalisha yatafanana na vile anavyokaa and then we think of the most high god tunapoanza kuhusu mungu aliye juu zaidi he loves us so much anatupenda zaidi to come to unite with us amekuja kuunganika pamoja nasi and we despise him na tunamdharau and unite with sin na tunaunganika na dhambi we are despising god tunamdharau mungu and we are underestimate the destructiveness of sin na sasa tuko chini ya uharibifu wa dhambi then the person will see more and more destruction in his life huyo mtu maishani mwake vipindi vingi ataona tu uharibifu and i've seen christians na yeye amekwisha kuona wa kristo the relationship with people are bad ya kwamba mahusiano yao na watu wengine ni mbaya zaidi relationship with god is very na pia uhusiano wao na mungu ni dhaifu sana there's all kinds of negative thinking and emotions yaani wao wako na mawazo kinyume kile wao he doesn't have a good job hana kazi nzuri he doesn't have a good family hana familia nzuri everything is destroyed na kila kitu kitaharibika and the worst is that he could lose his salvation ni ajabu sana ama mbaya zaidi anaweza kupoteza uokovu so with any is we can look at the opposite kwa hivyo katika mstari wa moto lazima uangalie kinyume chake to warn the people ili kwamba ukawatarishe watu but when we warn the people lakini unapowatarisha watu we don't have to beat them utanichapa <laughs> usiwachape we don't have to say you have no use ukawasiwaambia kwamba wewe hata sio mtu wa manufaa we don't have to yell at the people usiwe mtu wa kupigia wengine kelele We just tell them God is willing to come to unite with you. Unawaambia tu Mungu ako tayari kuja kuunganika pamoja nao. He wants to have a close relationship with you. Anataka awe na uhusiano wa karibu na wewe. And you despise the Almighty God. Lakini sisi tunamdharau Mungu mkuu. And you sins and adultery and tunachagua kutenda dhambi. So what will happen to you? Ni nini kitakachofanyika na sisi? You want to wake up. Je, ungependa kuamka? Now, I'm not saying there's no place for pointing out the sins of people sharply. Sisemi kwamba ni vibaya kutambua dhambi za watu na kuzitamka kwa nguvu. Sometimes there's a place for that. Wakati mwingine kuna sehemu ya mambo kama haya. But I just want to say don't do it all the time. Lakini nasema kwamba usiwe mtu akifanya hivyo kila wakati. Rather encourage people to grace God. Hebu ukawaimize watu kwa neema ya Mungu. So any one of you here, mtu yote hapa, you know how wonderful God is? Anaitwa Mungu ni ajabu kiasi gani? Do not let Satan steal from you. Usiwaache shetani akakuibia. Okay, now let 
I'm now using this Bible passages to use the law of God. How to use it? Anatumia mistari hizi akitumia sasa sheria ya Bwana. Mimi nafikiria namalizia na kumbe bado ndo anaanza. Anatumia sasa kutumia sheria ya Bwana. And then Matthew 16:17. Matthew 16:17. Matthew 16, verse 17, we already gave you Bible verses. The Bible verses was given to you. Tayari umesha andika umstari. Jesus said to, to Peter that he was blessed because what he could say Jesus is Christ is from the revelation of the Father. Basi, Petero na Yesu na mwambia Petero kwamba yeye ni mubarikiwa kwa sababu alipo tamuka kwamba Yesu ni mwana wa mungu anayishi haya kutoka katika mawazo yake lakini alikuwa ni mungu alie mfunulia. So the grace is God can speak to us. Kwa hivyo hapa neema ni kwamba mungu anaweza kunena na sisi. So what's the opposite? Je, kiyume ni gani? The opposite is Satan can speak to people too. Kiyume ni kwamba shetani pia anaweza kuzungumuza na watu. And so Jesus, uh, Peter later asked Jesus not to go to Jerusalem. Na hata Petero anaulioma Yesu asiende Yerusalem. Sometimes when we obey God in any moment we could have pride or or a love of money. Wakati mwingine tunamtii Mungu na pia sehemu nyingine tunakuwa na zile tamaa ya pesa. Mbona unazungumza pesa sasa hivi na sisi tunataka pesa na So we should be careful about the thoughts in our heart. Sometimes it could be a very simple thought. I use an illustration. If you look at your spouse, and say in your heart, I don't like him or her. That's already a seed of destruction. And this seed, maybe it has been there for a long time already. Because we don't know how to build up the relationship. So we let the sin, the despise of our spouse stay in our heart. The more of this negative thought stay in us, the more we have to despise for the wife. And it can destroy the relationship. So we be very careful. We hear from God and not from people. Yesterday we talk about people giving us garbage. People say you are no use. I don't like you. Now this words we don't want to keep. Yani haya maneno usiyashikilie. We want to keep the good words of the Lord. Hebu ukayashike maneno mazuri ya wa Mungu. So then we'll be careful. Hapo yani uwe mwangalifu zaidi. And sometimes a sinful thoughts came unnoticed. Wakati mwingine basi mawazo mabaya yanakuja pasipo wewe kujua. For instance, Peter denied Jesus three times. Kwa mfano Petero akamkataa Mungu mara tatu. At that time he was totally afraid. Na sasa mara ya tatu alikuwa ameogopa zaidi. Jesus had been arrested. Na Yesu wakati amekamatwa. Suddenly he was afraid he would be arrested too. Yaani pia yeye alikuwa na uoga kwamba atakamatwa pia. So fear overwhelmed him. Sasa uo so sometimes this negative thoughts from Satan and from our sinful nature can come into our heart without knowing it. So we need to learn to be sensitive to the voice of God and the voice of our sinful nature. Okay, any question? So the Bible verse, we can find out God's nature, His grace, and what we should do, and also the law to point out our sin, what we have failed to do. Kwa hivyo lazima, tuangalie katika mistari, tuwane uwasilia wa mungu, na tuwane mungu, anataka sisi tufanyi nini, ametueleza vipi katika huu mistari. Now this takes a lot of hard work. Yani hii inakufanya, unafanya kazi ya ziyada zaidi. In the future, when I put this in writing more, I will send it to your bishop, and then whoever can read English 
we can form a WhatsApp group and can send any documents I've written to you. Aha. Kwa hivyo nasema kwamba atakapokuwa ameandika mambo haya kwa wingi, atayatumia askofu na yule ambaye anaweza kusoma Kiingereza anasema kwamba mnatengeneza kikundi cha WhatsApp ambayo atakuwa anawasaidia mambo haya ya kujifundisha. Hallelujah. Okay, now if you don't have question in the 12 minutes I have I want to talk about marriage now I, because uh -huh. I think we didn't have time this time but I will just say in a very simple way. Anataka kuzungumza kuhusu ndoa kama hamna maswali. Tamsuulize maswali. Stop now. Stop it. And then